Are you looking for a podcast about the sweetest black cat in town? Well, then you must be thinking of another podcast. Good evening, Kelsey. Good evening, Robert. How are you? Fine and fantastical. I'm I'm lying. I'm not. How are you? Oh, man. (laughs) I am just getting rested again, finally. Oh, okay. Um, Okay. So in the last show, I told you guys, like, I was moving, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, Big shout out to the loveliest co-host. You took care of shit for me from Tuesday forward last week so that I could get that shit done. Actually, real quick, we were, like, not packed, man. Oh, really? <laughs> like, we were so far from getting, like, ready. Oh, God. And so I asked my boss, like, Thursday. I was like, hey, I know it's month end. Stuff is busy. But, like, I'm thinking things could be fine if I weren't here on Friday. And he was like, mm, that's probably not going to happen. Uh. Maybe at best half day, right? Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, okay, well, you know, it's just because, like, uh, you know, I'm moving, uh, moving in with my mom because, uh, you know, stuff's getting tight, you know, just helping out with her. And, you know, I love my mama. And then he goes, I love my mama. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll talk about it tomorrow. And so, like, we hang up. I, like, log on at 8 o'clock in the morning, Friday uh, I make my coffee. I sit down at 8.03 and like my phone is ringing and it's my boss. So I pick up and he goes, take the day off. Just ah. write this write this email and you're good. I'll talk to you later. Good. And that was it. And I was like, it's because we love our mamas. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm thinking that's what did it. I spent Friday doing like so much shit. Get everything handled. Like life's pretty good, right? Nice. But also on Friday, <clears throat> I lost... My hand. Oh, uh, sorry. Can you back up a minute? <laughs> uh, we bought a ceiling fan for the apartment because the living okay. room didn't have one. Was it made of like axes? No. Okay. But you can buy a fan and have it put in and then you can take it with you when you go. Right. Uh-huh. So I'm not dealing with, el- I'm, d- I'm just not dealing with electrical shit. I don't know how that works. Yeah. So I'm, not, I, I'm just not sucks. about it. Right. Yep. So I let the complex do it. And of course they waited till Friday, the day before we're moving to finally show up and do it. Of course. So the guy shows up, I'm packing stuff. He's a neat dude. And then he just goes like, are you ready to receive the fan? <laughs> are you ready like, to receive my limp fan? <laughs> I was like, What? <laughs> And he's just sitting there holding the fan, like, ready to give the fan to me. Okay. And I was like, oh, I'm helping. Okay. <laughs> so I walk over and I grab, like, like the base of the motor, right? Uh-huh. And it has all the fan blades on it, so I can't really get my other hand up to the motor as well. So I, like, go to hold the bottom, like the base, right? So I'm yeah. holding, like, the base of the motor and the base of the fan. Uh, the base of the fan, of course, is, you know, the glass orb thing. Oh, God. Yeah. And so, like, I guess he either let it go and it fell too fast in my hands or the glass was that fragile. Oh, fuck. But that glass just completely just melted in my hand. Oh, no. The whole bowl just goes and just starts, like, giant chunks falling and I oh. got a humongous shard of glass in my hand. Oh, fuck. Did you have to go to the hospital? No. I just was like, got a pack. And I oh. held a paper towel on it and moved on. Oh, my God. So, like, the glass, like, went in straight and then did, like, a J. Ugh. Like, it goes in and goes whoop. And then just, like, you turned. Yuck. I think there's still glass in there because when I close my hand, no. it hurts really bad. No. No, nah, I'm kidding. I, I'm, I'm kidding. I think I'm good. <sighs> I think I'm good. I made sure, like, multiple times. Okay. Plus, I've been, like, picking up heavy shit with this hand, so, like, wouldn't it hurt if there were glass in there? Probably. (laughs) That's what I'm thinking, so I think I'm good. Okay. But, like, I had, like, this just sliver go in, and I'm, like, bleeding in the sink, and he goes, are you okay? (laughs) No, bro. (laughs) And I was like, you know what? I'm good. 
We're good. You God. You can go. You can leave All me right. home, please. Peace, bro. And then he left. So, um, I'm actually letting it air now. It looks pretty good. So that was Friday, and it is now, I think Thursday. I Thursday. guess. Thursday. It yeah. looks pretty good. So good. I'm happy with it. It's itchy though right now. Ugh. So I've been like, you know, sans one hand, <laughs> all of the move. God. You know. But I'm still just like, I just like had it bandaged and I've just been picking up shit and just doing what I got to do. Got to do it, right? Uh, I like bled through the first bandage. Jesus. I was like picking up tubs and was like, oh, well, this didn't last. So that was fun. Then Saturday they show up. I got some movers because I've just resigned myself to never picking up a washer dryer ever again. No way. They're so, they're so bulky and heavy and awkward. I'm just fucking done, dude. Yeah. And so I got movers. They were going to show up. They told me at 8 o'clock on the dot, right? Okay. They call me at 7.15. We'll be there in 10. Oh, shit. <laughs> and I was like, my fucking alarm hasn't gone off yet to wake up oh for God. you. So. I hate waking up to a phone call. I know. Like, And you to have to, like, like pretend, like, hey, hello, hello, I'm, I've been, I've, I'm awake. <laughs> yeah, I know, because they're like... Mr. Walls, how you doing? You about ready yeah, to see us? We are good. on our way. Yeah, perfect. I'll, I'll see you. What day is it? And I was just like, oh, hey. Yeah, I'm totally awake. Yep. What's up? My eyes aren't even open. <laughs> I'm really good at making the voice sound good, but being like dead asleep everywhere else. Oh, my God. So they show up. I do all the move stuff. That all worked fine. Tons of our stuff had to go to storage, right? Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, we basically... Like downsized to like a, like a room and a half, yeah. From like a two bedroom apartment, you know, with a washer dryer and shit. Right. So we get all that moved in. Uh, the storage is literally packed to the brim. Like they pushed our dining room table in last, and it like fits <laughs> just inside the doors as you close it. Oh my god. <sighs> it was a mess, but Saturday went perfectly. Got it all handled. Life was good. Well, good. And then. Uh, I was trying to set up this stuff because I wanted to make sure, uh, you know, all this worked, like the computer stuff for you guys, for podcasting, because we don't miss Mondays, you know? Yeah, we don't miss Mondays. Uh, almost missed a Monday, man. Ooh. <laughs> because I couldn't get the power cord into the fucking outlet. Oh, no. Why? What do you know about, like, new outlets, I guess? <laughs> Nothing? New outlets have, like, little flapper doors inside. What? So, like, when you pull out your your plug, these little doors will close. So, I guess, like, dust doesn't get in there, maybe, or something. Well, so nice. like There's, like, little plastic, like, I just imagine, like, saloon doors swinging okay. in there, right? <laughs> yeah. I swear to God. You know, I had to bring in the muscle. I was like, yo, Taylor, plug this in for me. <laughs> <laughs> she fucking is, like, full body... Like, like wrenching it in and like just like pushing the wall in, Jesus. And it like will not go in there, right? So I was like, "It's it. It's over. There's no way this computer works now." Oh my god! And then so I go out there and I'm like, "Do you guys ever have tr- trouble plugging shit into your fucking outlets? Is there a lock or something on this saloon door?" And my dad's like, "You just put it in there." And I was well, like, deep. "Well, it ain't working." And he goes. Go get a screwdriver. No, and I was like, no. I was like, wait a minute. You want me to stick a screwdriver into the outlet? That is like day one of mechanic school. Don't fucking do that. Like with the most certainty of of life. He goes, yeah. Yeah, do it. And I was like, shouldn't I flip the breaker for that? And he's like, no, just stick it in there. <laughs> and I was okay. like, I was like, are you like for real or are you like kidding? You know, like I wasn't sure. Yeah. And so I show him my screwdriver and he's like, not with that. Let me get you one. <laughs> so he gets me like a tiny little screwdriver and he's like, Taylor, just do it. Stick it in there. So Taylor sticks the screwdriver right in the outlet. Your dad is trying to kill Taylor. <laughs> what? <clears throat> and um, what he said she happened. Died. What happened? Uh, nothing happened. Nothing? And I was like. But why shouldn't, why is nothing happening? <laughs> and as I said, I don't do, you know, um, electrical shit, I guess. So yeah. maybe I don't understand this. As a person who's been like on the receiving end of a f- 
full throttle outlet, like throwing on, I I do not recommend anyone touch electricity yeah. ever. Please don't do it. But I don't will say, it. Taylor stuck the whole fucking screwdriver in there in real life. So oh my god, I mean, the, <laughs> it was so stressful to watch. She like got it in there, man. She's in there like up to the hilt. Yeah, she's like in there, like all right, doors open. Let's plug this in. And so I thought maybe, maybe that's okay. But once you start plugging it in and it makes contact with the plug, that's when shit would get wild, right? I, I so guess. I'm like, so I'm like, pull it out, don't do it, pull it out. I'm fucking screaming, and she gets the plug in there, right? Okay. And life is good. And she goes, I, I did it. And then she pulled it out, and then we couldn't get it in again. And I was like, What the it fuck? Was <laughs> Oh, why? She goes, well, we got it in the first time. I thought it would be easier now. So she has to stick the screwdriver back in there again. Oh, my God. So she stresses me out twice, but we got it. And as you can tell, there's a podcast here for you guys. So obviously it worked. And Fuck. everyone's alive. <laughs> Jesus. And Living Taylor was in the Friday Roundup. That was not, she sure was. That was, that was not a body double. <laughs> I mean, like, you saw her face. That was her. She is alive. But I still, I'm talking about it now. It's already happened. And like the same like anxiousness is like, you're sticking a screwdriver. You're sticking metal. That's like the whole don't stick a fork in an outlet thing. Is that not the same principle? It's the same principle. My husband (laughs) stuck Play-Doh in a fucking outlet. You were, what? Yeah, I don't, I don't even fucking remember why. I cannot for the life of me remember, remember why he did this. It was like in our first apartment. I was like, what have you done? Like, Play-Doh is basically just salt. And salt is basically just like electricity waiting to happen. <laughs> it's just fire. Yeah. Don't put Play-Doh in an outlet. Don't put a fork in an outlet. Don't put anything in an outlet that you don't want to turn on. Now, okay. I did tell you about the apartment we moved into and... I guess the ground, so, like, the bottom part of, like, a three-prong uh-huh. had broken off into one of the outlets. Oh, my God. And I did yank it out with pliers, so just, like, <gasps> willy-nilly. <gasps> yeah, I did. I straight up was like, I'll get it out. And I just, like, pulled it out. And then I went, should I have died? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah, so I'll send the picture. Like, I still have the photo because, like, I don't know if you've seen this on TikTok lately. But, like, what is the end-all, be-all, one solution for landlords when they rent out a new place white paint you paint over it there was white paint over that plug oh my god and what was broken inside of it jesus like i have a photo of an outlet with a painted ground plug in the bottom hole of the outlet how do you break off the ground plug in an outlet like how do you even know (laughs) what kind of animal strength did it take to do that and what angle for real, because, you know, the top two still had to come out. Like, yes. Like, they all fit in at the same time. It's not like that one's so much longer, <laughs> you know. It's like somebody stepped on the plug as it was, I, I don't know. I don't know. But Taylor did the impossible and survived a screwdriver in an outlet. Go and Taylor. This is this is going to be your jackass warning for the show. Uh, that was performed by a professional. Please don't do this at home. <laughs> Please don't do this. No. Don't do that. Don't think they did it. No. Advising you 100%. Legally bound. We are not bound that you stuck it in there. I told you not to. <laughs> Robert and Kelsey said no. Do it. Why'd you Fuck. do it? We told you not to. That's your, that's your own fault now. That's on you. So anyway, we're all moved so anyway. in. Things are good. You guys have already seen a little bit of the layout. I'm going to try to pretty it up for you guys. The Friday Roundup looks good. Streams will look good. Yes. It's a really nice space. Everything's good for this. It's nice and open. I think it's going to work out fine. We just have had zero time to unpack. Mm. Because Taylor still... So, like, we're out in, like, McKinney now. Yeah. Uh, Like, beyond McKinney, right? Yeah. Taylor works in Louisville still. Fuck, that is a drive for those of you who are not local. <laughs> yeah, she gets up at like 6.15 in the morning. That's disgusting. And I mean, I get up at like 7.59 to work at 8 o'clock. Yeah, I don't exist before 9 a.m. Yeah, I was about to say, you had to like get your schedule pushed later to just be around. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, she does. 
I know that, like, if I had to for my job, I know I would, because I used to do it for one of my jobs that it took me a while to drive to before, but, like, I, get, I gotta give that girl props. She does it, doesn't complain, but then she has to come home, so by the time she gets home, she's already exhausted, and then pretty much has to go to bed to wake up at 6 o'clock again, you know? God. So, like, we haven't really done too much in the unpacking phase, but, like, we're getting there. Because unpacking is always much harder because when you're packing, it's just like stuff it all in a box, get it out. But unpacking is like, where do we put it all now? <laughs> yeah, like I need to set this up because like I, I finally got the PS5 hooked up and that was like a whole thing. But like there's yeah. still so much to unpack. But of course, you know, I made like the important things. PS5, computer. That's the only two you things need. you need in life. Yeah. Except for a crackable. Oh, yeah. Crack that thing open. Now that I've moved, I need... To drink. Oh, yeah. I'm sipping on a Diet Coke. Here's some ice ASMR. Ooh, oh, yeah. very nice. <sighs> so, yeah. Um, so, Elden Ring is out now, finally, after a long, long wait. Yes. Um, we have been, you know, closely watching it. Neither of us want to buy it to play it because we did see a nice soul stream. One of our... Yes. One of my good friends, CJ, has been so kind to stream Dark Souls, what, two for us, was it? Um, I think he did three. three for us, yeah. Yeah, one of them Dark Souls games. Um, so yeah, after watching CJ play it, I have determined that like, this game is not for me. It's just <laughs> I don't not going to work? Okay. I don't have the patience. Um, so we were not going to buy it. But uh, as it turns out, CJ also is so kind to share his Steam library with us. Like, There's a function in Steam where you can share... Your yes. friends, your your li- blah, where you can share your library with your friends. Because I do have somebody's library. <laughs> yes, and uh, he has purchased Elden Ring, so of course he has. Of course he has. Because I am <laughs> so, waiting for a full re- a full CJ review at some point. Yeah, I also am waiting for that CJ, right in, do it. Yeah, we need that. We decided to you know turn it on and fuck around with it because why not? It looks like a really pretty cool game, so I'd like. I'd like to at least see it, you know, on a graphics card that can handle it. So okay. we booted it up and we played with the character creation. <laughs> My for 13 God. hours. So the character creation is so intense for this game. It's, I mean, for all the Souls games, they have like a pretty broad, uh, a robust character creation screen. Yeah. Um, there's like s- six or seven different classes you can go through, but that's, I mean, I don't care about the class. I care about how my character looks. <laughs> so I, my TikTok has been nothing but Elden Ring since it came out. Oh my God. Like one out of 10 videos is not Elden Ring on my page right now. Yeah. It, like, I mean, it's pervasive. It's everywhere. But I did see somebody who <laughs> created Kanye West in the game. Yes. And it legit looks like Kanye West. It's disturbingly accurate. I mean, no. Yeah. Character creation in this game is on another level. Um, We were, uh, I mean, whenever I get a character creation screen that is super customizable, Richard and I always like to make like the most horrible monster that we can. Beautiful. (laughs) So we made somebody who looks like she got stung by 16 bees and then ate them. So she's terrifying for some reason we gave her like a dorsal fin on her chin i don't don't know how we managed that but um yeah we made her like puffy in all the wrong places it's fantastic i've seen Um, the hair and i just want to make a berries and cream person oh my god yes like that's my goal when i finally play this game yeah um, so yeah, we fucked around with the character creation for a long time and then got into the actual game and Richard has never played a, a Souls game in his life. He's oh. always kind of stayed away from them because they're so okay. like, you know, frustratingly difficult. They're so soulsy. They're so soulsy. Yeah. Um, and he's of the same opinion that I am. Like, I love myself. I don't want to put myself through that kind of, you know, frustration. Yeah. He turns to me when we started and he's like, we're going to play until I die 100 times. Oh my God. I'm like, okay, I don't know how long that's going to be, if that's going to be like 10 minutes or if that's going to be like forever. I was like, I'll give you an hour, maybe 30 minutes. (laughs) So we played a little bit. Um, We, neither of us know how a Souls game really works. I mean, we saw, you know, CJ was able to show us on stream. Yeah. uh, But as far as like where to go in the game or like 
how important cut scenes yeah. are or what merchants look like. We, we know none of that shit. So we ended up just skipping through all the cut scenes because we were like, let's just get to the <laughs> gameplay. <Okay. laughs> and we got to the gameplay and ran out of this church and like immediately attacked the first thing we saw. And it was a merchant. And oh God. He fought back with all his fury. Um, he fought, he fought us with a bouquet of roses. <laughs> Aw, that's Which, cute. <laughs> it wasn't cute at all. He, like, used it to cast fireball or some shit <laughs> at us. So we died to him, like, three or four times. Um, but eventually we were able to glitch the game into, like, if you run back into the church, he won't follow you, but he'll stand at the doorway. So you can just kind of, like, poke oh at him God. from inside the church. <laughs> so okay. we were able to kill him that way. And we made the mistake of going down into a dungeon and opening a chest that had a transport trap in it. Okay. And it transports you like to a different location entirely on the map. And it transported us to this place that we were horribly under leveled for. So we spent the whole time just like walking around getting our fucking ass beat by these terrible swamp dogs. And <laughs> it was so like the the map doesn't give you a good idea of like where to go and I don't know if it was in the cutscene or we missed it or something but the story it does it doesn't give you like head to this location it's just like here's the world have fun yeah that's that's kind of how they are from what I I've gathered oh man from what like people have said <laughs> if it was me at the controller I would have quit the game after about 30 minutes but Richard was like no I'm going to figure this out <laughs> so uh we we ended up like I had to Google a couple of times. Like I'm stuck in this area that I'm under leveled for. Like, how do I get out? How do I fix the transport trap situation? And apparently you can like fast travel. So yeah. if you like rest at a little soul light or bonfire whatever, like thing these, or something, it's, it's like the bonfire mechanic from souls games, but it's like different. It's like okay. more magical. I don't know. It's like Ooh. a little shiny shard thing. It's not a fire. It's okay. just something. But um, yeah, so you can fast travel between those and, we ended up fast traveling out after like, it felt like 90 minutes of just wandering this fucking wasteland, getting our ass handed to us over and over again. We walked into a swamp and there was this big, like nasty ball of something. And it was like, hit it. And so we oh, hit it God. and it spawned a dragon. And okay. we, we had to run away from the dragon. Uh, the game, it's, it's really gorgeous. It's completely yes. beautiful. I, I love looking at it. I would hate to play it. Yeah. It does not look at all like I would have fun in that game. We ended up dying a total of, I think, 11 times last night. Okay. Um, Richard is still in there playing it right now. I don't know if you can, like, hear that in the background, but he's actually having a really good time. Have, so, since your TikTok is not, I guess, so Elden Ring, like mine is. Uh-huh. Have you come across the Pope Turtle? The Pope turtle? I don't think so. We did have a turtle that we killed. There's oh legit a Pope <laughs> turtle. What the in this fuck? Game. He's wearing a little Pope hat. Yeah, these games make zero sense. Yeah, that's pretty much the vibe that we've got. Um, there's like a, a town called Merica, like M E R I K A. Okay. <laughs> and the whole time we're just singing, Merica, fuck yeah. Like it's. It's all I can focus on. So I don't know anything about the story or the characters. I just know that we've been killing people we're not supposed to kill and not killing people that we are supposed to kill. I would like to send you some of the TikToks I get, but I feel like you would just be like, what is this game? <laughs> I mean, I'm interested. I, I, I'm interested in the game just as a part of the zeitgeist, you know, like I want to yeah. know about it, but I have no desire to play it. Like I saw one where... This guy was, like, fighting a boss, like, a really big boss, right? And he's got, uh -huh. like, one hit left on it. He's about to kill it. And then off screen, a tiny little dude with a torch, <laughs> like, burns his ass and he dies. I have seen that. I I screamed when I saw that because if, if that was me personally, if that had happened to me, I would have, like, jumped out a fucking window. Yes. Then I saw one. This guy was fighting, like, a bear, right? He's uh -huh. fighting, like, this bear. It's huge. And he it's finally called Big kills Fucking it. Bear, right? I don't know. But he kills it. And then that was a baby. So then the mama what? comes running because the baby had just died. Oh, my God. And it's even bigger. Like, I don't 
understand <laughs> these games. I find the game very entertaining from an yes, outsider's perspective. Me too. Like, I'm absolutely curious about it. I don't want to. I I don't want to be involved with it. I just want to know about it. I do though. Like I really want, because I've never really tried to play one. Yeah. Because I've I, just you know, never honestly, done it. I think it would be up your alley because you. You like Metroid a lot, and Metroid is all about, like, you have to get the timing down with the bosses, right? Yeah. And this game, that's every single enemy is about timing. Like, you just have to kind of watch their attack, figure out what they're going to do, and then play counter to that. Because, like, I guess I always stayed away because I thought it was, like, a whole weapon-breaking situation. But like, I have no idea. I know that the weapons don't break in this game. Okay. And I see these TikToks of people that are like, I found this weapon and made this build. And now I'm like this unstoppable machine, right? <laughs> okay. And like, there's some builds that people make with these weapons they find that I'm like, how can you not enjoy playing this game? Like, like the way people portray it, it looks like it could be so much fun. Yeah. But I think the barrier to entry is so large because... I don't know if these people find these things by accident. There's no way you just go, okay, I knew that I had to step on this leaf on the, you know, east side of the map, fast travel to this place, talk to this guy. He (laughs) grieved the leaf, so he gave me something to put on the leaf's grave, but I didn't do that, so I went south, and then I gave it to this guy instead, got the best armor in the game. Yeah. Like, that's legit shit that this game does. Yeah. You you, You can't just know that. No. There's no way you just know that. I don't know if people are, like, data mining this kind of stuff to figure out what to do or where to go. Or if it's just, like, organically people are stumbling upon solutions to these things like that. And then they just send it out to us lesser ones, you know? Yeah. Like, that's my problem. Like, the people that play it, they make it seem like, well, why wouldn't you think to do that? Yeah. And it's like, because that's not what you would do. Yeah, like, we, I've been on the subreddit for it because we were Googling, like, how the fuck do I get out of this terrible place? Yeah. And everyone's like, um, fast travel, duh. And there's people in there like, I've never played a Souls game in my life. Don't talk to me like a child. Tell me how to fast travel, please. I'm asking for help. Yeah, like, I'm trying to be cool. Yes. It's like, it's literally one of the first things that can happen to you in the game. Within the first 30 minutes, we were transported to a, a level that we were not prepared yeah. for. That sounds like... I think I told you when Metroid Dread was coming out, I got on the the Reddit for Metroid and like the yeah. big post that came out was like, we cannot gatekeep this game. I know. It was like, be cool. Everybody if, put on your nice faces. Yeah. Like if somebody asks a question, treat it nicely. Be and I patient. mean, people were asking questions that I would be like, come on, but they've, <laughs> but they've never played it. So, you know, yeah. like people would respond to them nicely, you know? Yeah. And I was really appreciative of the community at that time with that kind of stuff you know that's good but it sounds like souls ain't there not quite they're one hard on us on like the games game. are hard on them yeah pretty much um one final note about this game the enemies are they can be very terrifying and they will fucking come up on you out of nowhere like uh we were lost wandering around in a field and this horrible like dog monster it's basically just like like think if you took a t-rex but like cut it off just before the arms like cut it off of the armpits and then for a head give it a giant schnauzer head cool and like melt it into a skeleton it was very horrifying gross yeah it was really nasty i'll see if i can find a picture of it for you at some point but yeah i saw a tiktok last night of a guy going into i guess a crypt or some shit and like he almost kills this guy right like uh-huh. like like three hits and like the health bar was like almost gone so he's like i'm the fucking boss and then the enemy like just kind of like shot some kind of like sticky goo at him okay and he got like wrapped up in goo and then it literally slowly walked towards him and his head lifted up into a into like an entire spider and all eight legs Jesus. like grab the character and eat his face gross we saw a thing that was like uh-huh. a centipede, but like <laughs> all of its arms were human arms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this game is like, it's really horrifying. We were screaming so loud. One of the cats, like we were stressing the cats out so bad. One of the cats came in and started yelling at us like, please stop. Like, you can't scream. That's, that's the whole Dark Souls 
aesthetic though it's like these horrible yeah. creations yeah and i love that honestly <laughs> like i would love to be in the room helping create these like what yes. if what if it was a dog but backwards <laughs> and it spit fire and spiders fire spiders <laughs> and they're like evil i love it okay <laughs> god oh well speaking of games uh, I went and saw a game movie. A game movie? Did you finally see Uncharted? Finally saw Uncharted. Uh, right before uh, the Batman was coming out to kick it out of XD. Because I figured this movie should be big and be seen Fuck all yeah. huge, right? Nice. How was it? So, went to see it. Um, yeah, it's, it's a movie. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it was exactly what I already knew. Okay. Like, I knew what it was going to be, and I actually think it was kind of worse than I thought. Oh, no. <laughs> like, here's the best that I can describe it. If you put a label on something, you're basically saying it is this thing, right? Okay. Like, if you put Uncharted on it, I'm now looking for Uncharted things, right? Yeah. Whereas if you took the Uncharted label off of it, I could go, oh, this is just an just an action adventure movie i can take okay. whatever it is in right yeah but but when you give it the label and you say oh this is uncharted now you're going this is that thing and now you're going to look at it not as just an action adventure you're going to go well how is this uncharted you know yeah and when you do that it fails miserably <laughs> okay oh it's <laughs> so, so they put bad it in, like too small of a box I don't think they knew where the box was, to be honest. Oh. oh, no. So it's kind of funny. Tom Holland actually has been on the press circuit trying to like promote the movie. Yeah. And he's been trying to do damage control before it ever came out. Oh, God. Because like, he knows it's not good. Oh. He, was, uh, he like released a statement that was like, hopefully people still enjoy the movie, but I do realize I was just trying to look cool and didn't really nail the character. Oh, man, he, like, said that? Yeah, so, like, he was even trying to say, like, it's my fault. I focused on the wrong thing. Damn. Like, like, like trying to kind of temper expectations and stuff. Shit. And it's true. At one point, I did notice that he was in, like, a leather jacket, and, like, all black and stuff. And I was like, That's not Nate is not Drake. cool like that. <laughs> and, as we all know, Tom Holland is a dancer by trade yes which is why he is a good spider-man right right nathan drake is clumsy as all get out he is stiff as a board and is not good at anything that he does okay so when i watch tom holland fighting a dude in a bar and like whipping bottles around like bouncing it off the walls and then into their face to catch it and then sipping it and spitting fire at people like what? in the matter of like two seconds I'm like, this is not the same person. Oh, my God. And then he proceeds to, like, backflip, kick off the bar and into a hole in the wall that they were, like, trying to get through to the next piece of the puzzle they were doing, right? Okay. That doesn't fit when you put the Uncharted label on it. If it was just, like, action dude that's cool, that was fucking rad. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I... I'm familiar enough with Uncharted to kind of know like what should what an Uncharted movie should look like. I I watched like the the YouTube movie oh, version yeah, of the first yeah. two games, so I mean I would expect it to just be like quippy and fun and like surprising, but not in a not in a like John Wick way, which it sounds like it was kind of John Wicky. Kind of, it was not quippy at all. I That's didn't kind of like what the I core didn't of Uncharted laugh once. is. Really, I didn't laugh a single time. Because Nate Drake is, like, really funny, right? Like, that's that's his yeah, character. He's he, silly. <laughs> yeah, he has, like, a silly charm about him. Like, he's just, like, yeah. not mature, you know? Yeah, like, lovable goofball who's also an action hero. Yeah. Um, did not get that. Hmm, shit. Um, I will give props to Marky Mark. He didn't just come out all Boston. Okay. <laughs> but he was not, like, the lovable mentor guy that he was supposed to be. Like, he's actually just a dick the whole movie. No, oh, well, that's not fun. I fucking hated Sully the whole movie. What the hell? And I was like, I'm supposed to love you. Yeah. Uh, Chloe was okay. So 
I don't know if you guys are as into it as me, but me and Taylor literally thought the same thing when we first talked about it. We were like, Chloe was wearing a dress? What? What? And I was like, where was the booty? <laughs> I was going to ask, was like her ass popping? No, no booty. That's like Chloe's whole thing in the video game. It's like girl with ass. Yeah. But she was just like wearing a dress and we were like, like the girl that plays her is amazing. Don't get me wrong. But in that scene where she was in the dress and stuff. Yeah. She looked like a high school girl. Oh, weird. Because she had on like a backpack and like jean jacket over like, like a, like a coral color dress, you know? And it was like, (laughs) you are too young. Like you don't look like a world faring adventurer you know yeah you look like you got to be home in 30 minutes <laughs> like it just it just didn't work for the thing they're trying to give me you know like, yeah on its own it's it's i mean it it is a fun movie so if it had just been like an action movie you would have been like it's okay i would have just thought it was okay like i didn't think it was anything like oh you got to see this movie okay right so don't um, waste dollars on uncharted no But especially as an Uncharted movie, I think they broke a lot of it. Damn. Like, most of this this movie was the fourth game. So now if... Because the ending cutscene, or the ending credit scene, is them basically saying that the first game is the next movie. Oh, are they going to make another movie? Well, we'll see. But I mean, like... Well, I I mean, they, like, open it up. Like, all movies kind of, like, leave the door, you know? Yeah, just in case. Yeah, but they, like, clearly reference the villain from the first video game. So, like, if they did the next movie, it would be that first game. Yeah. Well, okay, fine. So, if we're going to follow the games now, you already took the big, like, set piece from, like, the third game, the airplane thing. You took all the pirate stuff from the fourth game and put it in this thing... Like, you're going to have to come up with new shit then because you, like, did a greatest hits of all the games and put it in this already. Yeah, I was going to ask if they did, like, a standalone story or if they were trying to emulate one of the games, but it sounds like they kind of did both. They kind of did the fourth game, but different. Okay. And the fourth one is one of my least favorite ones. Yeah. So I was already, like, if you wanted to do it good, you should have just done the fourth game as it was because that was good enough. Right. But, like, you messed it up. And there's a girl in there that's supposed to be, like, what Nadine was, who teams up with Chloe in that DLC for the fourth game. Yeah. We kill her in this movie. Okay. (laughs) But that's who she was kind of mimicking as supposed to be. So, like, are we just kind of saying that's never happening? Like, it's all mixed up and jumbled, and you cut out things that aren't supposed to be here yet so now they can never be there like it's all mangled from an uncharted standpoint just as a movie yeah sure we just have a new bad guy right yeah i genuinely didn't like it like i just yeah. didn't have a fun time that sucks but nolan north was in it the guy who plays nate from the games that was fun he was in it he was in it for about like 10 seconds i think okay he's made like a little cameo yeah which was which was fun and this was a thing. They don't use the music from the game ever. Really? And the game is known for its soundtracks. Like, yeah, every like game's sweeping soundtrack orchestral. is good. Yeah. None of that music is in this movie. Well, shit. Until the scene where Nolan North is in it, which was nice. But that's the theme song for that franchise, and you're not even <laughs> going to use it for the franchise? What a bizarre choice. It's a very weird movie. And I think, I really think if a part two comes out, we're going to have like a Sonic situation where like they were doing something, they saw how it didn't work, and they're going to give the fans what they want next time. Oh God. Okay. Like, I think they know enough about what they messed up, except they didn't show it to us beforehand. Like they didn't give us the trailer for us to go, that's ugly. Yeah. So, like, we got a whole movie that's ugly, and they have to fix it later, you know? So, you didn't see the hedgehog teeth until it was too late. (laughs) Yeah, I just had to be surprised with that. Great. There were moments where I felt like they accidentally were doing it right. Mm. It was like they were kind of just writing scenes, and they had what they were trying to do, and then to get them to go somewhere else, they accidentally gave you, like, the Uncharted charm sometimes. 
Okay. Because there were like four scenes that I remember being like, that feels right. And, and like, I felt it, you know? I was like, yes. Yeah. Like, they know what to do. And then they'd go back to being the bad stuff. And I was like, so were these like accidents? It was just like filler stuff that maybe they were like, we don't know what to do here. So do something. And then that wound up being what we needed. Yeah. It's just, I don't know, guys. It's not great. I wouldn't recommend it. Okay. I <laughs> That's unfortunate. I probably never watch it again. Oh. Like, I don't think I'll ever have a... Dr- There's not even, like, a sequence that I'd be like, I want to watch that part again. Like, there's nothing... Like, I'm good. Damn. Like, I'm good. Hopefully part two is better. Okay. Well, do you want to uh, stop thinking about how bad that movie was? And Yeah. I got some air purifiers because we moved. Yes into my parents house and i just want to make sure like the air is pure jinx hair doesn't go all crazy you know yeah also just clean up the air a little bit just get it clean bought four of them bad boys four holy shit yeah where'd you get them from like one from each room i i sold my soul to the devil i mean it's only really one place you can get that amazon (laughs) for a cheap price yeah it was amazon so they're Mooka brand, which can I just say, Mooka sounds like the most third-party off-brand type yeah, of brand you it, could probably get. It sounds like a bad video game controller, like the one you get if yeah. you're over at a friend's house and they want you to lose at Smash Brothers. Like, all right, I got the Nintendo one. Uh, you use my Mooka one. You get to play with the Mooka. And you're like, mm, the Meh. B button doesn't work on this one. <laughs> Why are all the buttons different colors? <laughs> Why is this one on the back of the controller? It's not even right. <laughs> If you folks enjoyed that bit of the pre-ramble, you can get the full bonus episode by going on over to patreon.com slash yimtope and signing up to be a patron. The patrons keep us going. They keep the lights on. They keep our feet on the ground. They keep our nose in the air. We're ready for it. We're hunting down the next topic. If you want to be the ultimate supporter beyond Patreon, you can get yourself some yimtope gear over at the yimtope apparel store. We got all sorts of good little things in there. Weather's warming up. Maybe you want a tank top. Show off at our guns. I'm ready for warm weather. Uh, the link oh, to our shop lives always in the show notes. You can always find it there. You can also find it in our bios on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, thank you so much to all of our supporters. Truly, thank you, thank you, thank you. Kisses on the forehead, kisses on the cheek. Just a little boop on the nose. And now back to your regularly scheduled Yemtope content. Uh, speaking of stuff that is not quite right or weird. Let's get angry. Uh, we saw this. I think I think Desi's the one that actually posted it in our Discord. I think so. Yeah, in the Yimtope Secret Discord for patrons yeah, only. And then I kind of did like a little bit more digging into it because it's a guy that I like. I do still like him. <laughs> I don't know why. But I don't follow him. You know what I mean? Like, I appreciate what he does over there, even if I'm not involved. You know? Okay. Um, so of course we're talking about David Jaffe, creator of Twisted Metal and God of War, uh, who previously got dogged on the show for being very weird about Metroid and it (laughs) made me uncomfortable, but okay. (laughs) Letting that go. What a fucking way to open a morning. He just like tweeted this like first thing in the morning. I want to read you this tweet and it's a poll and I will give you the final results as well. Yeah, I'm actually curious because I don't know the final results. And I okay. honestly don't want to, but I, I need to. It's just way closer than you'd think. Okay, uh, he just put up hypothetical, colon. <clears throat> if you were playing and loving an open world game and there was an easy automatic platinum PlayStation trophy. So, you know, achievements and all that kind of crap. Can you clarify for me, like, what is a platinum PlayStation trophy? Are there different, like, levels of achievements? Yes, so there's there's a bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. So usually okay. you only get a platinum when you've gotten every other trophy the game has to offer. Okay. So like on Xbox, every game is worth usually a thousand gamer score. Okay. And you might usually total up to like maybe eight hundred, and that last one, the like one that says you got everything else, is like two hundred, all at the last minute. You know? Okay. So it's like the last big thing to give you the big number, right? The feather in your cap. 
So I've only platinumed a, a few, like Uncharted. I've platinumed every Uncharted and God of War. Okay. Like, I only do it for the games that I love to like, because I gave up trophy and um, achievement hunting. Like, to me, they ruin games. Like, they make you focus on not just enjoying the game. You're focused on, like, tiny things you wouldn't normally do. Yeah. You know? So I don't really do it anymore. But, like, for those, I'll play the game, and then I'll be like, all right, now I'll just do the random shit. Right. So basically, it's all like, I guess just say it's like clout. Well, I got the platinum, you know? Okay. It's just like a high trophy that like most people won't have. Okay. So if you could just get a platinum trophy, get the highest one, like have the biggest trophy for this game, automatically, would you go for this trophy if it were as easy as going into a minority filled... And then in parentheses to clarify, Jew, black, LGBT, Muslim, etc. nightclub and killing all the minority NPCs, would you do it? Like, would you do that to get a quick platinum and just like kind of be done with the game, I guess, if you were only trophy hunting? Why would you ever? Why? What? What state of mind was he in that he tweeted this? Like, first thing in the fucking morning, he wakes up and he's like, you know what? I have a good question for the internet. This is going to get some people talking. I watched his video discussing it. Oh my God. And I f- see the train of thought. I, I don't even... But it, uh, you, you got to preface questions like this. <sighs> like, you can't just say that because it makes you look like you want to do that. Yes. So you know like he he followed up his stupid ass poll tweet and he says, I'm bummed I'm seeing some game journalists publicly attacking me for my nightclub NPC tweet from earlier today. I'm fine if they don't like it or find it offensive, but it would have been nice had they reached out before they attacked me publicly. Yeah, so but buddy, what the fuck? <laughs> I watched his video on it and he was like, In my day, journalists would follow up with their sources and not just have an opinion without knowing the source. That Why was his you... take on that. <laughs> I I don't even want his train of thought behind it, honestly. Like, I just... Why would you... It's it's almost hate speech. Like, it's as close you, as you can get to hate speech without your eyes getting wet. It's, it's... I could come to the same question, almost. For me, the question wasn't related to minorities. It was like... Would you do, like, it just horribly atrocious thing to do it? But his mind for a horribly atrocious thing was he gave it, like, a definition instead of a vague. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like, if you're going to ask a question like that, leave it vague. Don't pointedly make a yeah. hate crime Would the center you do of your tweet. <laughs> an atrocious act upon humanity to get a quick platinum? That's yeah. the question. Right? Yeah. Or like make it something that's so outlandish that doesn't happen on planet Earth, you know? I mean he's essentially being like, Would you commit a pulse nightclub situation in order to get a platinum trophy? There are relatable well, situations that he can that we can specifically call to that have occurred here in that's, America. That's why he asked the question. Like specifically that question, because he was playing cyberpunk, was in a nightclub, was thinking about that shooting. Jesus Christ. And just said, I'm going to get the gamers talking because I guess his thing is he likes to get people like ask the hard questions and like poke at humanity's foils. I don't know. Some weird shit, right? I I feel like he thinks he's playing devil's advocate, but he's really just like a bull in a china shop. You have like you can be that, but you got to you got to say that first. (laughs) Yeah. Hey, (laughs) hey, I want to see what people would think about this because I think we live in a society where we don't value human life as much. So here's my question. Boom. Yeah. You can set it up now, right? Yeah. There you go. I gave it a good setup. It's an, it's acceptable to ask now. (laughs) I don't know about acceptable, but like, it's more understandable now that you're asking it. But his, his upfront was hypothetical colon. Yeah. Like like that's that's his setup. He prefaced it. So anyway, uh, the final results for the poll, because I know that when he posted it, it was trolls that answered first, because it was like overwhelmingly yes, 70% yes. Fucking gross. 
Uh, but the final final results are 42% yes and like 58% no. I hate that. But I know that it's Twitter. So I know that a lot of the yeses are people that are just going to say it to make it show yes. You know what I mean? Right. So I know that it's like, I don't think there's any poll on Twitter with a hard hitting question that's going to be true or accurate. Yeah. Not like a serious ass question like this. If it's just like peanut butter and jelly or Nutella and toast. Yeah. Like that might be more true. That, honestly, but like, but this, yeah. it, it's going to be like, oh, yes, I would. I mean, I wouldn't, but like, they don't know that I said that, you know, like, but I just want to make somebody mad it. with this click. Yeah. So yeah, he said that, and like I get it, because I thought, okay, the uh, the Modern Warfare 2 scene that I think I talked about a couple shows ago, where, because we were talking about game censorship with Martha's Dead, right? Yes. And for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, you went into an airport, a Muslim airport, and you killed right. everybody in the airport, and 9-11 had literally like just happened yeah so like at the time that's hard yeah like that was a whoop you know that was like a should we do this (laughs) yeah so that's why they gave the option to skip it because i mean they wrote that game and story before that had happened it just seemed unfortunate that now the game came out and that was in it you know right so like when he asked this and i think about his reason i think of that moment and i'm like okay Basically, that's like saying, would you play that scene to get a platinum? And I can see the question. <laughs> but. <laughs> but. Big but. My dude. <laughs> that's, yeah. That, that's, that's not how we start discussion. No. <laughs> this really is how not. you incite, like. That gets trolls answering you on the wrong side. Yeah. Because it becomes inflammatory, and that's what yes. they thrive on. This is not a legit debate. This is... This is inflammatory. This is the bear. Yes. So, I can see it, but to get it where I feel like it's right is... It's a far step from what really happened. Yeah, a hop, skip, and a jump is yeah, what it is. It's... I mean, I can see the right way to do it. It's over there. It is yonder. <laughs> okay it's so it's far over away the from hill me. we can see it with binoculars i think what you keep calling him an edgelord yes <laughs> <laughs> can you can you just define edgelord for me because like i've heard the term but like what am i supposed to picture when i think of that uh just somebody who's like who says things that are anti like counter society in order to think make people think that they're cool then yeah, that's him. Okay, yeah, because super ass edge lord. You know, I've I've toted this one out a lot. Like I thought it was funny when he said it, but this was before I knew how much he did this online. Like I thought he was playing into the Last of Us controversy stuff, right? God. And he was, but like it blew up really big. Somebody asked him while he was playing the game. Uh, he was streaming it, and they were like, "What do you think about shooting the dogs in the game?" Yeah. Because that was a big topic when that game came out. Right. And he, and he said, well, they sure make for a good shooting. God. And I mean, there's really nothing to that statement, but like... Yeah, it, he, he didn't say like, I go out and shoot dogs on the daily. Fuck dogs. Yeah, so like, I get that that's how he does what he says, because I've watched him do it for so long. Yeah. But I was trying to find this tweet while we were getting ready for the show, and I was reading a lot of the stuff. <laughs> And he just goes about it the wrong way every time. Yeah. And, and I know that if he heard this, he would probably tell me I was being like, probably a snowflake or something like that. And I mean, I don't have a problem with what, with with what you're saying, dude. I'm yeah, just you saying. you know what, David Jaffe? You do know it what? better. <laughs> write in, please write in. <laughs> like, do it better, because I know that you saw, he said something about uh, Aloy and her beard and stuff, right? Fucking yeah, I. <laughs> Ah! because he has one here where uh, somebody I guess tweeted him and told them to play it and then he said gross she's so fucking hairy and everybody jumped on him and then he tweeted a little while later just to be clear because I guess people get confused with my take sometimes I am joking 
and taken a piss about the Peach Fuzzgate Brigade. Well, it's hard to tell when you're joking when your whole personality is made up on, like, That's what prodding. I'm saying. Like, I feel like I'm a good judge of, like, when you mean it as a joke or not. Yes. I, I feel like I am good at that. But usually you have to kind of, like, insinuate that you're joking as well. Like, you can't yeah. just say the bad thing. You kind of have to, like... Put an LOL after it. Or, like... Yes, yeah, something. You, <laughs> something. You, like, yeah, you have to finesse it in a way that you can still say that thing. Put a silly emoji in there. I don't know. Yeah, but then, like, you kind of, like, reel the people back in. Because I feel like I do that with you a lot. Yeah. And you never truly get mad at me, but you're like, I don't know. He's on the fence. <laughs> <laughs> but I try to... Because I try to do that sometimes. Just kind of, like poke the bear i don't poke that hard like yeah you don't you're not like tweet. yes you're not hitting the bear with a two by four yeah but uh this uh gaming journalist attacked me over my tweet photo that he has right here uh-huh big clownfish tv vibes i know <laughs> i know i was thinking it <laughs> dude don't get me wrong i am saying i like david jaffe i think he's a cool guy but I'm not going to say that his Twitter is the place that I want to be. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Like, it's uh, this is not terrible. Where I'm, yeah, I'm not going to hang out here. No. but It's not a safe space. <laughs> yeah, I was scrolling through a lot of this and I was like, what is happening? Like, some of the th- It's like they come out of nowhere. Yeah. Like, he just says something and you're like, I know you'll explain it to me later. <laughs> but, like, we could <laughs> use that up front. <laughs> Yes. Because I don't follow him, and I bet most people don't, so they don't ever get the explanation, so he only comes off as a fucking shitbag. Yeah, you only see, like, his viral stuff that blows up, which is the most edgelordy of the stuff. I can't deny that. Don't get me wrong. And, frankly, this is kind of what actually made me the most mad. Sorry, guys. It's a dumb thing to be mad about for, (laughs) like, me. Okay. He's shitting on Metroid so bad when it came out, right? Uh huh. He has done nothing but talk about how Elden Ring is the greatest game of all time. Oh my god! And I'm like, <laughs> we don't have the same wavelengths here, dude. Because <laughs> you're calling Metroid too hard, but this is Masterclass, where a dude with a torch can burn your ass mid-fight and you die, <laughs> lose your resources, and then you got to fight all that shit again. Yeah. But Metroid's too hard because you couldn't shoot the ceiling. It's too difficult. I don't know what to do. How about a map that doesn't give you any indication of where to fucking go? (laughs) Oh, guess what? Elden Ring does that. Yeah. And that was his big complaint about Metroid. Really? Yeah, because the map didn't indicate that I would need to shoot the ceiling. I would have never thought to look there looking at the map. Oh, my God. So, anyway, guys. He's just a scrub and he's mad about it. He quit developing games after his last game, and that was like 10 years ago. God. You can't apply 2005 game development to games today. No. And think that, well, here's how I would have done it that would have been better. You don't know what we do now. You know? Like, it's a different world. Yeah. You have to let those people do it. I don't know, man. He's just so out of touch. I do feel that. (sighs) But yeah, so that was the tweet. I wanted to give you the results. I know I knew that we had to talk about it, and I yeah. wanted to give <laughs> I wanted to give him the little bit of kudos and backing that I could. <laughs> but again, there's always a butt with this guy. I he is a he's, butt is what he is. <laughs> he's too hard. Like he just doesn't he just doesn't do his stuff the right way. He's too much. I mean, he just doesn't do it. Oh, boy. Um, Speaking of not doing stuff the right way. Yeah. I don't know how to, like, smoothly transition into this next topic, but, like, man, it's hard to go online these days. Can we just talk about life? Yeah, let's just talk about life. And how real life is happening right now? Yeah. Um, So, we're recording this on March 3rd. I don't know what the fucking world's going to look like when we release it on March 7th. Yep. But, like... Don't know if you guys have been looking at the news lately. Um, 
Russia's um, invading Ukraine. And we're it's, watching World War Three unfold. I don't want to call it World War Three yet, but it really feels that way, doesn't it? I mean, this is like how that kind of thing starts, you know? Yeah, it One truly person is. makes a move, and like then... Like, one major power makes a huge fucking mistake, and... Everyone's like, hey, calm down, buddy. And then it's like, I'm not your buddy, guy. It's like, I'm not your yeah. guy, friend. And then World War Three happens, you know? It's pretty much just like, I... Uh, I feel like we're right now in the stage of like everyone is drawing lines kind of in the sand, you know, Russia made their stance. Um, Belarus apparently sided with them. Ukraine is of course being the victim in all of this. So Um, can you tell me what the thought process was? Do you know? No, (laughs) I, I mean, I've heard a little bit about it. I wish I was more, it's, I really, I'm, living on the line between like, I wish I was more engaged in the why that this is happening. But at the same time, like I, I feel like I'm being inundated with just like constant news about it. And it's hard for me to disengage from it, Yeah. but I'm not learning anything from the news. I'm just seeing like sad, 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 sad. And my brain isn't processing the why of anything that's happening. Cause I mean, okay. As we know, my news is TikTok. Yeah. Like, I don't do Twitter and all that kind of shit. So, I see a lot of shit on TikTok. Now, I saw Putin do a speech at least two or three weeks before all this started. And he Uh basically, like, came out and he was like, I'm going to do this thing. Yeah. And nobody can say no to me. Because if you do, I have nukes. And I'll use them. Let me take what's mine. And then just kind of like walked away. Okay. And I thought that was terrifying and I didn't know what he was talking about. Because, you know, you only get like a little bit on TikTok. You don't get like the full press conference, you know? Yeah. And then like two weeks later, he's invading the Ukraine. Yeah. So I kept thinking he like thinks that land, like it's a territory thing. Like this is my That's... land. This is like the motherland, you know? Yeah. So like the part of Ukraine that they're invading used to belong to Russia. This is my understanding of it. I'm not a thousand percent sure, but yeah, from, from what I have heard and seen the part of Ukraine that they are, that Russia is taking claim to, they did own at one point in time, but now it is rightfully Ukraine's land. Also that land has a lot of like, m- like resource mining going on yeah. there. So I was like, okay, is this a resource war? Is it not well, even I'm, territory? I think it's just, I mean, it's it's like their capital city. It's Kiev. Yeah. And I have also seen something about like the ports because as much as Russia is like an enormous landmass, their port presence is nothing in the West because mm-hmm. they're fully landlocked on that side. So if they take that bit of Ukraine, maybe they have access to a port. I don't really know. It's a big world step here. You know what I mean? Yeah. It like it it truly feels like we're I'm fucking I hate that we're living through historical event after historical event after once in a lifetime historical event. Yeah. I feel like every single once in a lifetime event that has happened to our generation has been like three times now. <laughs> yeah. It just it's really rough to watch it unfold and to know that we're like on the other side of the world and you and I personally are, you know, we, we can't do anything about it. Yeah. And I mean, we can donate money of course to Ukraine and their, their fight, but it just feels like everything that has been happening in over the last five or six years, it feels helpless to just sit here yeah. and not know how to, how to help, how to do anything, how to process. Cause I mean, like I said, all I'm doing is just sitting here getting bombarded with news report after news report of like, this city was bombed. The city was raided. These people stole tanks. So, so you're getting like the news side. Yeah. Cause I'm getting a lot of the TikTok side where it's people like basically giving you like the ground footage stuff. So I'm seeing like the people side. I did tune into a TikTok live where there was a guy um, live streaming from Kiev and yeah. there was like a bunch of people marching and saying like, stop the war. They're like chanting in Russian. Dude, Ukrainian. I saw a bomb hit 
Like, oh my God. somebody's, like, filming, and, like, they see it come in, so they track it, and you, like, watch it hit. And that's when I knew, like, this shit was, like, legit now. Doesn't it feel like you shouldn't have to watch a bomb hit a country? <laughs> Doesn't it feel like, well... I well, don't... yeah, but uh, also, I've been seeing this, and this bothered me. I want to get your take on this. Okay. Uh, so Trevor Noah did this on The Daily Show today. I had, yes. Uh, I had The Daily Show pop up for me on TikTok today. Uh-huh. You know what? I want to fucking watch Daily Show, like, every day. Yeah. I love that man, and I love his thoughts. I think he's one of the smartest people that we have around. Truly. Because... He just treats it like it is, but he has a good way of making the metaphor to explain it if you can't grasp that bigger concept, you know? Yes. Yeah. But he didn't even do that on this one. Like, this was literally just a sad TikTok. I did not like it. But he was <laughs> like, I just want to show you what's going on in the news. And it's basically all of these news reports, and they keep saying, like, like look, look at all these people fleeing. Like, this is Europe. Yeah, these are is, Europeans. <laughs> this is a developed country. These are these are white people. Yeah, they they keep saying these are Europeans. Uh huh. But at the end of the day, it's these white people shouldn't have to leave their home because of bombs. Like that's for Africa and the Middle East. Like yeah, that's for like, barbarians. People one that person don't said have that shit, and I was like, mm, <laughs> who? That's hard. Like, yeah. Can't... I mean, it's it's great that people are being so accepting of Ukrainian and Russian refugees right now because God knows they need it. Like, they need a shelter. They need a place to go. But why can't that same privilege be extended to Syrians or people that are fleeing yeah. war in Afghanistan, Iraq, Iran? Like, why are, the, why are the privileges that we afford to people... Europeans to white people why are those privileges not afforded to people fleeing like Anywhere scenarios else. that are the same yeah. or worse in darker skin countries yeah like that TikTok was very gross it hit hard because it's the way they all said it like yes <laughs> like like the way they said Europeans it's They're like Europeans this is above that like that can't happen here yeah, and Trevor Noah, too, made the point to say, like, I don't know if you remember history, but Europe made their whole fucking deal on insane wars. So, like, yeah. this is nothing new for Europe. <laughs> yeah. It's not, like, unforeseen territory that Europeans would go to war. Like, yeah. you don't have to go back that fucking far. My grandparents were refugees from goddamn World War II. That was, and it's <laughs> that was just a big one. That was a big TikTok. Yeah, it... It just really makes me feel <laughs> like I, yeah. I'm i feeling constantly all the time. And you feel so much that it starts to feel like you're not feeling at all. Yeah. And then, so see, I get these TikToks of, I've been getting a lot of people that live here, but like they have family in both Russia and the Ukraine. Jesus. And so they're just discussing it. And they're like, well, I mean, literally, it's like interchange. It's, I know this is, you know, very local, but like, that's like saying Dallas to Houston. Like, it's such an interchangeable thing. We have people that commute to Dallas to Houston for stuff or Houston to Dallas. Like, it's, it's just like side by side. They're kind of the same, right? Yeah. And so she was like, you know, I have family in Russia. I have family in, the, in, in, in like the Ukraine. She's like, they're basically the same people. Yeah. It's, it's not like two different countries. It's kind of like one people just in two places, you know? Right. And everything I've seen, and so, you know, she was discussing that and stuff. And she's like, and now I don't know when I'll see my family again because, yeah, you know, we won't be able to travel there. They won't be able to travel out and all this stuff. And then I keep seeing all these things that like the Russian people are like we don't agree with this it's solely made by that man and his yeah. government like the people are like we don't want this right and you're just seeing all these stories of like children being enlisted as fucking soldiers to go fight in a war that they don't have a say in 
And yeah. it's heartbreaking. It's devastating. This is legit one of those history moments. Yeah. Like, this is a thing that's going to be taught later, and it's going to be like, what was that like? And, you know, I'm going to be like, oh, well, I saw a girl on TikTok talk about it, you know? Yeah. Like, that's, that's like the story that I'm going to have. Then that feel weird? Like, that's going to be history. Like, I saw it on TikTok. Like, that's <laughs> yeah. where the news broke for me. Right. Like, that's... Ugh. That's just so weird to think about in the future because, I mean, that's happening now. And this is shit that's not going to fade away. This is going to be remembered. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like part of me wants to hope that it'll all subside and somebody's going to talk some sense into Putin and they can fucking back down and everything will go back to normal. But yeah, it just feels like this is the beginning to something much larger and much worse. I and very well could be. And it's just hard to see where we go from here. <laughs> like, I, I hate, I, I hate thinking about like war and military efforts. And I really don't want the United States to get involved because like our military budget is fucking stupid. It's, it's huge and it doesn't need to be. And like, I know a lot of veterans and I just, I, <laughs> I, it, I'm worried that, I don't, I don't think they're going to enlist like a draft or anything here. Yeah. I just, it's just, but the war the would effects. pull us out of debt. Ugh. <laughs> God, don't say these things. <laughs> God. I don't know. You, you just see the effect that war has on the people you know and love and it doesn't go away. And like, I, yeah. I don't, I don't want the United States to get involved, but at the same time, like we have to, I feel like it's almost our duty as part of like the United Nations to step in and be like, "Man, ah, this is pretty fucked up. You should stop that, Russia." Like so. I, I saw a tick, a TikTok again, but it was like an interview with Biden, and he was talking about it, and they were like, "What are you gonna do?" He was like, yeah. "I'm not gonna do anything." Yeah. And they were like, "Why?" And he's like, "I mean, it's Vladimir Putin." Like, yeah. like, what do you want me to do? I saw it coming. I tried to talk to him. But I can't force his hand on how he runs his country. And he goes, you know, if we retaliate, they retaliate. Like, that causes a bigger thing. And they were like, yeah. okay, but we have people in the Ukraine and stuff right now. What are you going to do there? And he goes, I warned them. And I said, you should leave. And I said that, like, a month ago. So if they're still there... I did what I could. He's like, I can't go in and get him because I will cause a problem. Yeah. And so I now I, how... I think about that and it's like, for real, what do you do as the leader of the free world? Quote unquote. Right. Yeah. How do you resolve a situation like this? How do you stop people that are essentially like us? I mean, they're a power like us and military and nukes and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. He's like, Putin's like the bully on the schoolyard. Yeah. And like, it's going to take a lot to take that down. You know what I mean? Like, you yeah, can't just be like, just hey, like, stop. That you can't just work. give him a phone call and be like, buddy, I don't think you should be doing this. It's definitely going to be like a whole, it's going to be an entire, it's, it's going to be gonna a be, war. It's going to be forcing that to stop. Yeah. I, and it sucks that he's like the one guy behind all this shit. Yeah. And then I'm sitting there like, he's been around for so long. How old is this guy? So fucking long. He's old as shit, but he's still healthy as a fucking bear. Yeah, I know. He's built, man. Yeah. It, I remember uh, him riding on the horse and stuff. Yeah. Um, He is... Oh, nice. He's 69. <laughs> this is... I mean, war itself is a big topic with no clean answer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, anything we say on the show is going to be inflammatory to somebody, I, I'm sure. Uh, it just, it fucking sucks. I think that's one thing we can all agree on is that, like, I hate it. And nobody wants to see anybody die, especially young soldiers who never had a say. Yeah. Like, I'm glad that, like, it's paired. Like, I won't lie. I mean, I'm glad that, like, 
I see something about this, and then it's like, hey, here's where you find this skull armor in Elden Ring, and it's a good pull away. <laughs> like you think about game, like that's the point of entertainment to help you kind of forget. But then when I immediately go to that video, I usually just skip it because I'm like, who the fuck cares? I don't care about this sword in this game. Like I just saw this girl crying about a family member she'll never see again. You know? Yeah. It, like, it's, it, di- it, di- it didn't make me feel better. Yeah. To have, like, social media when it first started was kind of just a way to stay connected with your friends and a funny escape from the world. Instagram was full of cat memes. And now you go on there and it's just, like, people with their fucking faces falling off because they're... Uh, it's just... It's, it's impossible to go on the internet at all anywhere without being just assaulted by images of absolute horrors and i'm not saying that i don't care that i don't want to care i'm saying that like i have my my bandwidth my personal thing you bandwidth, care too much I, it's just that i have to care about everything you know i have to care about so many fucking things there's, there's problems here in america that we still haven't solved there's problems abroad there's a goddamn pandemic still happening there's people that still believe that trump is president there's <laughs> there's I can't, just huh? <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> there's there's a whole lot of shit just all the fucking time and it's literally everywhere like i go on tiktok to shut my brain off and look at a funny video of an animal and instead you see like some ukrainian woman telling a soldier that she hopes he dies and leaves sunflowers in the soil like i gotta say that that is the most boss move i've ever seen in my life dude i mean hell yeah go babushka but like (laughs) jesus and you know what? You can't even have literally anymore. Did you see that thing I sent you? <laughs> yes. Literally doesn't even mean that anymore. Like, now you gotta care about words not even meaning the same thing. <laughs> That's just evolution of language. Like, I was mad at the wrong thing. I know. But, like, I mean, frankly, that comes with living in the world. Yeah, you know, unfortunately. As you, as you get older, the world gets bigger, and... It all pretty much sucks. Is this how our parents felt, though? Like, I don't feel like they were so fucking plugged in. I feel like there's a cord in the back of my head that I need to fucking no, yank out so that I can turn off. I mean, we are straight up Matrix, man. Like, we are plugged into the system, right? Literally, I, I, I cannot get away from it. It's everywhere I turn. No, our parents didn't have this problem because they had... We just discussed this about, uh, I think, when we were talking, like, the news sources and stuff. Yeah. Their plug-in was either, like, Fox or NBC. Yeah, you get, like, the you get the local news. Which one are you watching? <laughs> you know, that's like... it's Like, you'll get a report on, you know, what's happening on Soil Abroad, but you don't get six news articles pinged to your phone no. by Google being like, have you heard this? Have you seen this? You got, you got the curated, tailored version of a story. Like, okay, there was a bombing. Well, and then this cat got out. What a, what a good time, right? Yeah. Yeah. But then we get it on TikTok and it's the unedited, like, here it is. Here's the people sad. Yeah. Here's a raw human emotion. Here's like a quarter cup of just absolute fuckery that like someone is having to deal with in their goddamn life. This is what they tried with the Vietnam War. Like they sent people to film the Vietnam War. Like they were just cameramen that didn't shoot guns. They were sent there simply to film. Because it was like the first time they were going to try to like show the atrocities of war yeah and then we hid that shit because it's gross <laughs> yeah and now like, like we didn't even show can't... it because they were like oh yeah we don't want to show people that we did that and now you can't get away from it because it's literally in the hands of every single citizen that's going through this yeah that's how we got that's how we got the black lives matter thing like we yes we were able to actually show it and not cover it yeah we are in, like, an unprecedented world of, like, uncovering shit. And we're seeing just how much, I don't know, how many blankets and wool was put over the eyes of us for so long. And it's slowly moving back. And it's, you know, it's not pretty out there. It's not. <laughs> but. Yeah, I, I don't know how to know. juggle caring about Ukrainian citizens, Russian citizens, with also caring about, like, all the fucking bullshit laws texas is trying to pass and that one have... got that that one got stricken down by the way like that's official yeah, thank god that one's gone 
Yeah, Greg Abbott um, tried to say that uh, providing gender-affirming care to children was child abuse, and the court was like, no, actually. <laughs> so that was one piece of good news. One, one little chocolate chip's worth of good news in this big shit cookie. I have my ender for you now, and it's an ad that I saw for, like, a uh, like re-election thing. Oh, my God. I'll have to tell you about it in the thing. I've been hearing this ad, like, nonstop, because now I'm around TV more. Yeah. Because I'm here, and uh, I've been hearing some stuff. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, like, this is what people that watch TV all the time hear. God. Oh, interesting. Because I've never heard this before, so I've never thought about it. But, like... If you watch TV at all, like, you're bombarded with it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is why we are the way we are. <laughs> Do gotcha. your parents have, like, a news channel on, like, all the time? No. They watch, like, my dad watches, like, 48 hours all the time. Okay. Yeah. They're, like, <laughs> history channel or something. But okay. because we do the Hulu TV, when they do ads, there's not ads that, like the station shows you get like curated ads from like your local area oh okay so like all the ads are like from here you know so like we're watching the history channel and and then getting a texas election commercial yeah why would the history channel show that yeah you know it's just because hulu knows okay they live at this zip code these are the ads for that region right and then they sprinkle those in so no no there's never really news on here that's good. Because I don't want that. No, it's oppressive. <laughs> I mean, there's really no way to, like, end this segment, or there's no goal in mind. It's just... Talking about I, how life is happening, man. It, life happens. It's happening right now. It's, like, a whole thing. Um, if you guys need, like, any kind of outlet, you know, our inbox is always open. Yeah, if you feeling stressed about it, you want to just, like, talk some stuff for real right into us we will interact with you let you just vent your feelings whatever it is that's what we're here for that's what we're doing with you do that with us yeah i think we need to get out of here please (laughs) before we get more (laughs) depressed before i start to cry you ready to go see that pope turtle (laughs) yeah there you go forgive my sins pope turtle (laughs) oh give me tortoise for i have sinned (laughs) All right, guys, please tell your friends about us. Help us grow this lovely audience. Don't forget to subscribe to us on your favorite platform so you never miss an episode because we release weekly every Monday. No matter what's happening, we are there for you. That is our guarantee, the Yimtope guarantee. And if you like that, you like that tenacity, that punctuality, why don't you go on out there to Apple Podcasts or wherever you do listen to us. Give us a nice review. That really would help us rise up, get seen by more stuff. The algorithm will take it over, and we'll get into more ears and lovely faces like yours. Uh, Social media hurts right now, but if you want a a friend on there that isn't so bad to look at, you can find us and friend us everywhere. We are at YMBTOAP on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. All of those. Um, And, of course, thank you guys in the Patreon so much for supporting us. Uh, you guys have been a rock in the discord. I know that we've, we haven't like super dove into the war, but, um, we've been, you know, leaning on each other where we need it. So it's always nice to see. Um, you can also email us at ymbtoap at gmail.com. We want that listener mail. Uh, it doesn't have to be about the war. It can be about how much you hate David Jeffy. (laughs) It could be about, um, shit. What else did we talk about this episode? Um, could be about have you ever stuck a a metal object into a socket don't recommend it that's perfectly fine are Are you you an electrician are you an electrician please write in and let us know why taylor didn't get fucking cooked doing that (laughs) um if you're playing elden ring if you are wanting elden ring if you don't want to like cry Elden about Ring? Elden Ring? <laughs> I don't know. Just let us know. If you watched the Uncharted movie and you hated it, you loved it, tell us your opinions, your thoughts. We are here for all of that. Our theme song is The Grim Reaper Blows the Horn by Farage. Please check him out on YouTube. Help spread the love because he spreads so much love through his awesome music that he puts out there for free for all of us to enjoy. He's an awesome person. And as always, thanks for listening and tune in next time to get the answer to that burning question. 
Am I gonna get Elden Ring? Am I gonna get into this shit? I think you might. <laughs> I can't find the name. I can't find the ad. I wanted to say it to you. I should have written it down. But I keep Damn. getting this ad for like like a Texas... It's not senator. That's like too high. Like maybe it's like a Texas like county a governor? thing or something. Maybe. Okay. But it's like... Texas, whoever, and some lady, they're like, she put in, like, critical race theory in our schools and blah, blah, blah. How dare she? Right. And uh, she's trying to make cops take a critical race test before they serve. Cops should be allowed to be as racist as they want. And it, like, shows an app on this kid's phone in school because it goes, and then she puts an app in our kids' schools that tells them how racist they are. And this little girl, like, finishes the test, and it goes, you are very racist. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like... Oh, my God. Then it's like, Texas Senator, whoever her name is, like, liberal... I wish I could remember the second word. It's like... Liberal snowflake. Too liberal, liberal for Texas. No, it's like three words. But I know the last one cracked me up so hard. Because they're like, she's doing critical race theory. She's doing all this stuff. And then it goes, liberal, like disgusting, wrong. And wrong's <laughs> just the last word. Oh, my God. And I was like, I did not realize. Like, this stuff was so inflammatory. That's the spice they're feeding the old people. Liberal, period, wrong, period. Jesus. It was intense. <laughs>